Welcome to Dakota Starry Nights. We're out here in a Class 2 dark site in the Badlands of Western South Dakota. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Explorer Scientific Ultra Lightweight Dobsonian Mounted Reflecting Telescope. The short end of it is, it's a budget telescope that does have some issues that will need to be addressed, more than likely, but you might get lucky and not have any at all. My issues resulted in the altitude movement. But once I squared that away and dialed it in, I've been very pleased with this telescope. It's ultra lightweight. It breaks down into two small packages that you could probably fit in the back seat of a Volkswagen Beetle. As far as collimation, there's none easier out there. If you've been having collimation issues or difficulty doing that, this is going to be a dream come true. It has a very unique way of collimating it from the front at the eyepiece and it worked very, very well. Collimation process and assembly took roughly just a shade under 25 minutes total. So that's pretty good. And I've only had it out four nights and I was able to get it all put together that quickly. With time, might even shave a few more minutes off it. But the long story short, for the, a budget Dobsonian telescope, this is something new because we're getting a Dob that is lightweight, compact, and the optics are pretty decent. So if you want to see the full review, stay tuned. And thanks for tuning in to Dakota Starry Nights. Well, it's finally here. We're going to do an unboxing and take a look at what's inside this big old package. It weighs approximately 75 pounds and it comes in one carton. So they've got everything in there. Well, let's take a look. Okay, so I've got it opened up and this is what greets you at first. This Dob has been available in Europe for over a year now, but it's just now become available in the United States. And I'll explain the reason why as we go along. Alright, so here we are. We have the two boxes. This is smaller box is your primary mirror and the larger box is the cage. Now earlier I had said the elusive Explorer Scientific Dob. And the reason is, Explorer Scientific USA decided that the fit and finish wasn't to their standards. I suppose they have gotten some of the issues resolved. One thing I'd like to show is right here, this is one piece and there's four of these trusses, which seems to be pretty nice. It's very light. Now here, this of course rides on the Teflon bearings. And this looks like fiberglass to me. I've seen this... Uh, in like restaurants and restroom it's like a beaded fiberglass board and it looks to me like they've cut a strips of it and glued it possibly with contact cement and then riveted it right here on each end underneath that from what i could see there is also a textured finish but it looks like it's aluminum uh, possibly they found that it wasn't doing the job so they've uh, covered it with this piece of fiberglass. All in all, it looks good. I don't have a problem with that. Okay, the other thing that I noticed was the light shield. And originally, I had thought that this was like a rigid uh, piece of uh, vinyl, kind of like uh, the Astro Zap Dew Shields. But it actually, it's just a light piece of foam, is all it is. And there is. Uh, Velcro here that attaches to the cage. Okay, so here's the mirror box. Now, uh, I could see here where they've welded this and they've taken a grinder. And it's a little rough, but you know, and here I could see just a little bit of rust right here. So, if that's rusting, then this couldn't be aluminum. Okay, right there along the crack here, right there you could see a little bit of rust. Now, I don't want to get too crazy, you know, because, hey, uh, this daub uh, was under a thousand dollars, and uh, which is uh, pretty decent for a daub of this aperture. Uh, and over here is the finish that looks kind of rough to me. However, this is underneath. Also here I noticed there is some, what looks like some beading, like it's rusting underneath. Not good, I'm telling you. That's just not good. I understood that this was going to be a 
all aluminum daub and apparently it's not. Okay, and just to verify it, I've got a magnet here and, yep. Okay, so the top apparently is aluminum because it won't stick to that, but the sides are steel. Okay, and then here, this separated. I haven't even opened this, okay? And that already has pulled away. This one and this one on the other side has pulled away. Well, we've moved past that, and as you open the lid, uh, this is what's inside, the red dot finder, some other hardware. Here in the corner is where they clip the truss poles. Okay, I've removed the foam, and there is no center spot on this mirror. It also comes with a collimating rod which is really handy because it's the only telescope I know that you could collimate from the eyepiece which was one of the reasons why I was interested in this and that's aluminum. Okay and here you see the two fans and down on the bottom there on the lower right next to the handle is the plug for the uh, power. However this to Newtonian did not come with a power box or battery holder or any such thing at all. I guess a guy's supposed to provide his own. Okay, the other thing is you can see that silver speck there that is a piece of aluminum from drilling. So now I found a few of those inside the mirror box. You're going to want to take a vacuum cleaner and vacuum that mirror box out because there was dust and little flakes of aluminum. Also, here's the foam and underneath the foam here I vacuumed underneath there. I noticed there was some flakes and dust, so, and of course, vacuum the top of the foam. Just be careful when you vacuum that you uh, don't touch your mirror. I vacuumed the top of the mirror, but I kept the plastic hose probably about three quarters of an inch to a half inch away from the surface of the mirror. It's a good way to clean a mirror. I do that often with my scats, and that way you never even touch it with anything, and the vacuum usually sucks up any pieces of dust. So you might want to give her a good vacuum of uh, being very careful of the mirror and only using a plastic nozzle. Okay, I've cut a paper circle using this and that gives you the direct hole measure six inches from there to there on a tape measure and then just lightly scrap it around and cut it with a pair of scissors or a razor. So now we'll lay this down. By the way, it does come with a donut, but you have to install that yourself. So we'll lay this down. And the other thing, I've uh, vacuumed this to make sure there's no dust. Okay, I'm calling that good. I'll take a magic marker here, one that is removable. So this is a dry erase a marker. It's the kind that you use for marking on a bulletin board and then you could just erase it. Go right down on that hole. There's a little hole right there. There it is. And now we'll take the donut. By the way guys, there's lots of videos out there on how to do this if you feel that this information I'm providing here today is not enough. Looks pretty good. We'll press it down with a Q-tip and then clean that little dry dot that we have on there. And it just rubbed right off. It was really easy. And for testing, we can do the fold method. Okay, let's move on to the cage. Okay, so I've got the cage here. The focuser seems to be pretty nice. It's got some really smooth action and it is a rack and pinion. And there's the rack right there. I prefer a rack and pinion, especially with a heavy eyepiece, a coma corrector, and what have you. I've noticed though there are like pieces of metal drillings right here. I'm picking it up in my hand right here. It's just this aluminum shaving and then when you roll this around there's something inside rolling around. I don't know if you can hear it.
And I wouldn't want it falling out and hitting the mirror. On a positive note, this, this looks really nice. I mean, they've done a nice job. The finish here looks really good. I mean, I don't want to give the impression that all I'm doing is knocking this scope. But this is a review, so I just want to point the things out that I find so that you could decide whether this is going to be something that's going to work for you. And we still have to take it out to a dark side because at the end of the day, how well does this perform? But for now, we're just taking a look at the mechanics of it. The other thing is down here they put more of this beadboard. There's really nothing inherently wrong with it. I don't have a problem with it. I think it looks fine and it's functional. So it's moving around on these Teflon pads here, and that's how it goes around, you know. And inside I could see more of this aluminum shavings uh, that have come from manufacturing. So be sure that you take this and vacuum it out. So here's the secondary and the cage and the trusses the telescope assembled. There are three from what I can tell uh, pads that adhere the secondary mirror to the metal base that is adjustable. So here we have the adjusters for the secondary mirror. This is all hand operated so you don't need any tools which is nice and there's a nice what looks like a heavy duty springs to keep the tension on there. One thing to note is that this is pretty low, so uh, probably the use of a observing chair is going to be pretty handy when using this scope. I'm going to move this to Zenith, and that eyepiece comes just right up to my chest. The center of the eyepiece is just 52 inches off the ground when you're just about at Zenith. So this is a great scope for kids. So down at the bottom of the mirror box you see that Allen head screw and that allows you to collimate this scope from the top at the eyepiece which as I said previously is one of the reasons why I purchased this. Also while you're looking at this if you look in the corner there you could see a little bit of rust forming. This is not good. I believe they should have shipped this with some desiccant packs and I didn't see any at all and this metal I'm not so sure how long this is going to last, particularly if you live in a humid climate. Again, this scope is under $1,000. However, a little bit of extra care would have prevented that. So that is the bottom of the collimating rod. And it's got a plastic end to it to protect the mirror as you go down into the mirror box. And that is recessed, so if you're careful, you shouldn't have any problem. The rod is aluminum, and the way it works is like this. With your hand on the end of the rod, it has a T-handle, you can turn it while looking through the eyepiece. So that's, that's going to be pretty handy. Okay, I've just picked up one of these Hotec laser collimators, the 2-inch version that fits right into the focuser. Using the rod that they give you to collimate from the focuser end of the telescope, I simply adjusted the secondary to where the dot was in the center of the primary where I put the donut and then went down for the three screws with the tool that they give you so you can do it standing up and looking right at everything is visible. And the handles that they give you here just make this thing so simple it's a pure winner in my book. And so now the next test is to go ahead and give it a dark sky test and see what we can pull in with this, see how the optics are. Okay, so tonight's the first dark night. I've got some lights way off in the distance on a little town out there on the prairie, and I'm going to zero in my finder scopes. I can see there's a moon coming up, and that ought to be awesome. So guys, uh, I'll give you a report of what transpires tonight, but I'm putting this camera away because I want to have some fun. All right. Okay, we're back in this shop here. I did a little kind of test out there this evening. I wouldn't call it first light. It was just to see how the mechanics of it worked for me. Eyepiece level, red dot, that kind of thing. And so this is uh, the changes I've made. The little bit I did see though, looked nice and crisp and clear, a lot of light. It looked good, it's very promising. Okay, one of the modifications I've made was to put a cover on the mirror. As you can see, I used a half inch piece of MDF. A quarter inch piece of MDF would work as well. 
that kind of made me nervous seeing that mirror exposed like that. When you're waiting for the evening or the star party to start or whatever it has you, you can protect that mirror. And then another modification I made, I put the eyepiece uh, perpendicular to the ground, straight up and down. Uh, typically it goes to the side. Normally it would go right here on the side. I find that's way too low. It's a lot easier to come up on this end. It's a pretty simple matter of just rotating the cage around to the next truss which is up here. The other thing I did was remove the red dot finder base and the red dot. I found it way too flimsy and way too low. It was difficult to get underneath it. And this is a standard red dot base and you could see those holes line up perfect. So you could just put your standard red dot base on there and I've got a really nice BSA red dot finder. It's a little higher and I think it's going to work a little better. This knob here on the side of the uh, rocker box is to tighten the tension on the mirror box as you go up and down in altitude. Okay, so here's the inside where the mirror box would be. If you back out the screw all the way to where it clears the metal, there's a little piece of sheet metal right there, it seems that it's off center. And so what was happening, because this thing was really getting stiff, if you watch you see it's not coming through the hole and what it's doing is it's pushing this metal out right here. It's pushing it out because it's not centered in that hole. It won't come through. And so it was rubbing, it was metal to metal on the side of the mirror box. So if you back it out, you see how that just popped through now? So you want to make sure that you're popped through so that you're not pushing metal and just make it to where it's just flush to the metal so that when you go to turn it in to apply tension you're not pushing against the metal on the inside and then it's metal to metal. There are two sets of holes for the altitude wheels that go on the side of the mirror box. One is here and one is here and then here, here, here and as we move up on the lid one here and here. They say that if you have uh, heavy eyepieces, like two inch eyepieces, it is preferred to use the upper holes. And I've tried that and uh, the action on the altitude was rough. Now that could have been due to the fact that I just pointed out how the metal was rubbing up against metal because of that friction on nylon bearing was not coming through the hole because the hole wasn't drilled center. Perhaps that's what the roughness was due to. Uh, we'll see, but I'm going to drop the altitude wheels down on the lower end and see what that'll do. Still having difficulty trying to get it to go in altitude, and I can see it's rubbing up against on the inside. I also notice that there's a rivet right there. Right there there's a rivet, and it's rubbing up against the side of the mirror box. Doesn't seem to be much of a way to adjust that to get it to go over. Uh, the mirror box or the support for the mirror box seems to be out of square some kind of a way and it's just not getting any real good action trying to get this thing to move in altitude. Azimuth seems to be okay but mirror box not so good. Okay so you can see where it's kind of rubbing inside this uh, rocker box. Uh, there's some rivets on the side of the mirror box and they're just rubbing right up against it and it's really dragging the action down. Also those pads, those screws are kind of sticking up so that's cutting into that uh, beaded uh, fiber board that's on the altitude wheels. That's kind of dragging it down as well. Okay, so we're back here with the uh, Explorer Scientific Trust Dob. And we're still getting real jerky, herky-jerky action on the altitude. And part, you see that it stops right there. It, the reason is it hits a, a rivet right there. And if you look, you could look down the line. I don't know if you could see it. It's skewed. It's not flush to the outside of the box. It's like the whole thing is coming in on an angle. 
So you got to move it over to get it flush. It wants to come. It wants to come over that way, so it's not riding perpendicular or flush with the uh, rocker box. You see, you see how it's on the outside of the edge there, and now it'll come up, and then it hits that rivet. And I got to tell you, the action on this thing is horrible. It really is. It's horrible. It's not fit very well. Disappointing, that's for sure. I'm going to try to resolve it, but right now uh, we've got our altitude wheels that just do not really function. They're uh, totally herky-jerky and it's hitting rivets and the box is out of square. This is not good. Okay, so these nylon strips, they protrude a little bit on this end. And in order to uh, tweak the mirror box to where to bring it in towards this way, I flipped that around. On this end, I flipped it around so that it's pushing the box over that way because it was dragging on these rivets that you see here but on the inside. The other thing I did was I shimmed this up with a piece of nylon hose actually that was cut in half to raise this up in order once again to take the mirror box and push it over that way from this end to keep it from dragging. And it seemed to kind of done the trick. I get a little bit better motion now in altitude. It's a little smoother now. It's going up and down relatively nice. Not so sure how long those nylon bearings will last, but I suppose a guy could replace them. And shimming that up in the rear, tweaked it to where I was able to get this side and this side flush to the outside of the box. Because it's still out a little bit. You can see it's still coming like this way but by putting that shim on the tab on the inside on on that side push this whole thing over and raising this shim here raising this up tweaked it and made the box go that way so it's uh, got a lot better action okay so here we are the second day and I had some time to think about altitude movement on this daub which I find kind of a little rough. Then I put these pads, Velcro pads that have the fluffy fuzzy side on it to keep this uh, from tweaking against this rocker board. This is the side that has that nylon friction ring that you operate with a knob on the outside and that will push the mirror box towards the camera. And, but what that tends to do is it tweaks the entire mirror box and pushes this corner against here. Not a good idea. If they had two of them, one on each side, then you can keep the pressure equalized. On the opposite side of the rocker box, there's this felt pad. And that extends all the way up to the handle. Well, tonight is forecasted for a clear sky, so uh, we'll get out there on a dark site where you can see the Milky Way. We'll be able to give this a whirl. Okay, we're back here in the shop, and I made a few improvements to the altitude mechanism. I added some pads to the inside of the rocker box. When I was uh, out last night looking at targets low in Sagittarius, at, we're at like 42 degrees here. It was pretty low down. And you could see that is just lovely. And last night it was jumping when you got that low. The reason is there is a piece of felt on the inside. And once you pass that felt, it tends to jump out of alignment. So I put that brown piece of felt that has roughly the same thickness of the felt. And I put it up higher um, so that when the box got low like this, and raised up it wouldn't veer over because it disengages that felt on the bottom and you get a jump and then when you go to go back in it it rubs against the felt on the edge and was breaking that off and that's why I put that black tape that you see here uh, in order to uh, bring that back in the line and so that when it would come back down it would feather into it and not tear it up but look at the action on this if grab it by the cage so now we'll go to Zenith 
and there it is. Really nice and smooth now. Azimuth was always good, never had a problem with that. It was really the altitude was giving me fits, but now with this adjustment, it's been great. Hopefully when you get yours, you might not have this difficulty with the altitude, but if you do, these are some fixes that might straighten it out for you, because this has really uh, been uh, so far a really kind of a nice job once, once you get over the different little hurdles that it uh, has. Well, here we are. We're out at a Category 2 dark site, and I don't know if you can see behind me, we got a small silver of a moon, uh, which will be looking pretty decent, I believe, in this 12. Uh, I've got the fans running. We're going to try to cool the primary down a little bit. I'm going to move into collimation. It's going to be getting dark real soon. I just wanted to get this little intro in before it got too dark to film it. I'm pretty excited. Looking forward to trying out the Explorer Scientific uh, Coma Corrector. It just came in this afternoon and we've got a clear sky. So, you know, with the improvements I made earlier today, as I showed you, it's running pretty good. We'll do some more testing and we'll give you the report at the shop later on tomorrow. All right. All right, like I said earlier, I had rotated this cage to where the eyepiece is perpendicular. Uh, last night when I was using it, I really liked it. So I found myself using it uh, on occasion when it was up like here in Zenith, the eyepiece here in the center, and super comfortable right here. See, just holding on to the truss or the cage right here like this uh, works very well. The other times it was like this, but without this being uh, here in the center, uh, you're doing this, you know, and like, oh man, your neck is killing you. I mean, because this is so low, it kind of hurts. And finally, there's a third position that you can put the focuser in. Right here we have the bracket that is used to attach the truss to the cage. But if you notice, along the cage here, you'll see a set of holes. There's approximately four of them, one corresponding for each bracket. By merely undoing these two screws and shifting each one of these brackets over to the next hole, you will change the focus of position to a more traditional angle. So that gives you three options for the focus of position. It's looking like another clear night. For some reason I'm not cursed with the new scope uh, <laughs> curse. It's been some great weather to be testing this. It is October, it's the fall, getting a lot of clear nights. Um, I will say last night's performance was really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, I was using an Explorer Scientific 100 degree eyepiece with this and a, and a Hutch Tech IDAS LP2 filter. I'd like to say also the Explorer Scientific 100s are perfect for a daub, uh, especially this 14, because usually with the red dot you can get it on the target and then you just go right to the eyepiece and because of that 100 degree you can usually pick it out. You don't need to have a finder scope. These two are just perfect. Uh, the other nice thing about the hundreds is that it gives you a time where the object takes a while before it goes through. In a narrow field, you know, you're constantly moving the daub. I found that uh, any ob observation, maybe I had to adjust the daub no more than three times. So the hundreds are great. They're perfect for this. I also have a coma corrector built by Explorer Scientific that uh, should just fit right in here. You get a pretty decent focuser with this. Kind of a little bit of a disappointment with the altitude wheels, but uh, now that that's sorted out and last night's uh, star test, which I did a full in focus and a full out focus after the mirror cooled a while, it looked pretty good. You know, I'm not going to say that, oh, it's excellent and all that. I'd say it's a good mirror. You know, for, for, for the money you pay, it seems to be a good mirror. Uh, your mileage may vary because you know how these dobs are. You know, some are good, some are not so good, but this one is a good mirror. Okay, so we're at the end of this review, but before I close, I'd like to introduce one more little feature that you might find useful, and that is a tablet holder. I've found this tablet holder at a local department store, and it happens to fit just right for this Dobsonian telescope. The tablet, of course, is used as a planetarium program. I have loaded on there Sky Safari, 
And by having it close to the red dot finder and the eyepiece, you could reference both back and forth to get a more accurate alignment of the target that you're looking for. Although I haven't tried it, there is a free app called Sky Eye, and that's supposed to work as a push to system. One of the advantages of this holder is that it's all plastic, and in this case, that's a good thing because the magnetics and the accelerometers in your tablet uh, wouldn't have interference coming off the holder. And the fact that the cage is aluminum and as well as the trusses is also a plus when using an app like SkyEye. Well, that just about does it. So in closing, I hope you found this review of the Explore Scientific Ultra Lightweight Dob useful. And if you would like to keep updated on the latest developments here at Dakota Starry Nights, subscribe. And thanks for tuning in to Dakota Starry Nights. Clear skies.